What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to YGOPD, your Yu-Gi-Oh! professional development. And today, I have something a little bit different, a different concept, a little bit revisited. I have a Punk Eldritch deck profile for you that takes the Punk engine in a little bit of a different way, just to give you some different ideas if you don't want to go full-blown expending money on either the Halk combo and with stuff getting a little more expensive with Deer Note and all that coming out, just to give you a little bit different take on the engine that might make things a little bit easier for you, whether to splash in both either Eldritch or a deck of your choice but before we hop into the profile of course a huge shout out to all of our new subs thank you all so much for joining the channel if you want to be included in the sub shout outs in the future just make sure your subscriptions are public when you sub to the channel so i can see who you are and include you in the shout out um, my voice is still a little bit hoarse so sorry for that um, but I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed, both public or not, for helping us reach our goal of 400 subs. We hit that about a week ago. Thank you all so much. And to celebrate that, we will be giving away two sealed uh, ghosts from the past two boxes here. Uh, we will go ahead and pick the winner randomized through uh, next week. Um, and all you have to do to be entered into that giveaway is be a subscriber to the channel. Make sure your subscriptions are public so that I can see who you are. And join our Discord link in the description. That is the main way I will communicate with giveaway winners um, until we hit a thousand subs to be able to do that community post feature. So with all that said, let's go ahead and waste no more time and hop straight into the deck profile. All right, we'll go ahead and hop into the main deck and I will do this by engine. I think that's just a little bit easier to see what packages are happening within the deck. So to start, we play, uh, of course, the heavy hitter himself, not required, but definitely an insane boost to any uh, trap based deck is triple Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Basically is a additional copy of any card in your deck as well as protecting your back row from things like lightning storm and all those good pieces. Um, but it's just kind of a mandatory three of, I feel like in this given format, it is insanely strong. And then for the Eldritch package itself, we run two of the Golden Lord. Two is perfectly fine for this build since uh, Eldritch is kind of the main focus, but also kind of in tandem, more of the uh, co-star of this deck build as well. Um, and to go in line with that, we play two Sanguine to search Eldritch. Uh, you'll see the trap line up a little bit different just because we have cards like Heavenly Prison to help offset that um, in the deck. It's not as needed to go as heavy on the Eldritch piece. Um, and then we play three Conquistador for our golden lands um, this is absolutely necessary i feel like at three this kind of does the most work out of the engine popping a face-up card on your opponent's field and then we play the one hakero um, you can play more given that it's still a dpe heavy format i chose to lighten up um, in lieu of expecting what might happen on the ban list but again as well as with cards like heavenly prison and this just not being a pure eldritch build you don't need to go heavy on it it's just another name that is in there but you can at least bump this up to two if you feel like it but so far one has has been perfectly fine in terms of the names. Moving on, we do play a small Dogmatica package in here. It's nothing crazy, but since we are using the Punk and we do end on an extra deck monster, usually um, it's always fine to have this. And outside of that, we don't really have a normal summon. So playing a couple Ecclesia to search out a powerful card like Punishment um, is something that is really nice to have. So we play the two Ecclesia, and then we just play the one Floor de Lise. Uh, you don't even really need to play Floor. You could just focus a bit more on the punishment side of things. I like having the extra body. It is nice, but um, is not necessarily needed. And then in line with that, we just play the two Servant, obviously to get either Ecclesia or Floor from deck or grave. And, uh, you know, bolster our extra deck in our grave with some utility and then obviously just the two punishment to go in line with that so nothing crazy but a small engine of course you can certainly cut this for more generic traps or eldritch names but i think this carries a lot of weight in and of itself if you just don't see what you're looking for right away it really kind of helps uh, facilitate your grind game a little bit better uh, but now for the star of the show, the Punk Engine, I really wanted something to showcase off uh, my CR core that I finally had the chance to get. It took me a long time, quite a few months to collect each piece, hunting one by one, but I'm really happy I have them. Triple Foxy Tune, this is your uh, another emergency teleport of the deck, discards itself as cost, and then another card up from your hand of your choice to the grave on resolution to get a Punk from your deck that is not a level eight. Uh, so this is gonna obviously get the level five when it comes out, but um, this this is kind of what facilitates all your one card combos. Um, all of the, the entire punk engine is pretty much all one card starters based on how it's built. So um, this is the uh, Foxy tune. And then we play the one ogre dance. Uh, this is a little bit of a different engine and what you're going for in the extra deck that I'll showcase in just a minute. But the one ogre dance is needed in the event you hard open Z Ammon. Uh, you want to use it to add this, discard it. 
um, or sorry, hard open the Foxy tune, you uh, get the Z Ammon, add the Ogre Dance, discard the Ogre Dance, get the second Z Ammon, or another monster of your choice that's level three, normal summon it, and then go from there. Uh, so, and then speaking of that, we play the two Z Ammon. These are the only two normal summon punks you need. If you want to add the Hulk combo or a few other aspects, you can certainly bump this up or mess around with the ratios, but this is more of an Xyz focused variant. So these are the only two that you really need. And then in line with that, we just play the three emergency teleport. All your goal is, is just to spit out this combo as quickly as you can. So that is it for the punk. And then uh, the engine, well, I shouldn't say engine itself, but engine requirement that I'll give away what we're doing is we are playing one ghost trick shot. So the punks are used to facilitate a utopic future line in this deck, which is really solid. Um, it facilitates the Dogmatica stuff. It does a lot on its own. Uh, works with things like Gozen Match and Torrential, since it's a light, can't be destroyed by card effects, all that good stuff. Um, but this is the one engine requirement you do need to run. It's the Monster Reborn that lets you get your second Xyz on the field to overlay into F0. So uh, also kind of a bit more of a trimmed down engine requirement than the DPE package, if that's not something you're wanting to do. Um, having this as a less of a brick and then just more starters overall is uh, preferred. So Onto the generic traps here. We play uh, Triple Judgment. Not much needs to be said about this. We want to go first. We are a trap deck, uh, and we want to prevent our opponent from playing the game. So we are always doing the three Judgment and the three Strike. Definitely uh, kind of staple three ofs. And in line with that, we play three Torrential in this build. Because you end on a card like Utopic, uh, Zero, F-Zero, Draco Future, whatever it's called, <laughs> um, it can't be destroyed by card effects. So being able to nuke your opponent's board and still keep your negate is really, really powerful. And then the last couple generic pieces, we have two IDP and one broken line. I've, I've always been a fan of maining at least one of this in any deck that I really facilitate Heavenly Prison in. Uh, it just does a lot by negating whatever the column it is uh, placed in. And uh, Heavenly Prison allows you to be able to facilitate where that goes. So an IDP is probably the strongest normal trap that we have available to us outside of a card like Punishment. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop into the extra deck. Um, we'll go ahead and start with the Ghost Trick piece. So Alucard is our first piece. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, I will showcase the combo at the end really quick of just how you do the Ghost Trick line. It's pretty basic, and if you've seen it in MBT's videos, you should be familiar. But just in case you're not, I'll go ahead and show it. But what you need for that line is basically one Alucard and two Angel of Mischief. How you're doing it, I'll just mention here real quick, is you make the Alucard. Uh, overlay into the Mischief. The Mischief gets you the Reborn. Uh, then you detach the Alucard, add the Reborn from your deck to hand, and then you can Reborn the Alucard, make a second Mischief over the Alucard just because its summon is not hard once per turn, and then you go into the F0. So that's the Ghost Trick piece, and then we obviously run both F0s, the little one, and then the main star, F0, uh, Draco Future. Definitely a really solid card right now in this format. Uh, does a lot to DPE-based control decks um, since they can't really deal with this in any way because even with the 400 drain, it's still 100 points more than the DPE. Can't be killed by card effects, and depending on if it's a simplified game state, to just be able to take their own DPE and use it is really, really good to help close out games. So that's the F-Zero package. Uh, in line with that, we still play uh, one Break Sword or any uh, rank three of your choice. I like Break Sword just as a utility for going second. One Downward Magician and one Zeus. Uh, just a little bit different in case you just don't want to bother going for the punk line. If you know you're going to go second, you side out the shot and you need some utility, you want some surprise factor, this is where this can come in really, really nicely. So. Uh, and then we play, for the last of our Xyz monsters, we have the one uh, Dreadnought and the one Lieb. Uh, this is just basically also for time and a little bit of utility sake. Again, giving your deck a little bit more potency, either going second or the mid-late game. Uh, just because you play Golden Lord and you play Heavenly Prison, both level 10s, really easy to get on the board at the same time to go into this line. So... And then the last bit of the extra deck can be personal preference, but it's a little bit more utility. Um, of course, we play the one Entis and the one Titanoclad for the Dogmatica package. This is just to add floor off of Nadir, and this is just our basic utility pop that we have access to. Um, and then the last couple pieces are just one Link Spider, one Phoenix, and one Unicorn. Uh, Link Spider is kind of mandatory just because you want to be able to clear your Eldritch monsters to keep uh, searching your traps, that is, and... Uh, 
Phoenix and Unicorn, generic PC utility does a lot of work, always good to have the spots for, but if you have a different preference, you can replace those. Uh, but that is the uh, extra deck, and we'll go ahead and just showcase a side deck. Side deck of always is, of course, up to your personal preference, given your region and your locals or, or states kind of format, but I'll just showcase what I am screwing around with for now. Uh, triple Lava Golem. Um, this card, uh, you don't have to do this. Um, obviously, it can conflict with the punk a little bit. But uh, just to be able to guarantee clear resources is pretty important. And since we are playing cards like uh, Itali in here, you can still kind of get around using this and then doing the full punk combo. But um, just another card to facilitate time and get rid of problems uh, on the board is really, really nice. And then three, Summon Limit. Uh, this probably should be goes and match if you have access to them. I did not find mine lying around uh, just because you have all lights. But uh, Summon Limit is still very powerful nonetheless to help slow down the uh, combo decks that will just do Brave Package. Um, of course, they can still end up probably bouncing this, which is why this should be goes in to lock them when they summon the token. But if you need a different Floodgate replacement, uh, Summon Limit still does a good bit, uh, but just something to be aware of. And then three, DD Crow, again, uh, DPE format turbo, Scythe format turbo, uh, just has a lot of utility of hitting different little problem cards, Evil Twin, Live Twin on Rogue, different things like that. Just, just puts in a lot of work, especially also in the mirror, of course, um, but a good utility card just to have access to. And then I feel like this is probably pretty straightforward, triple anti-spell in a trap-based deck. <laughs> and uh, the last card is Triple Lightning Storm. These can be Cosmics, Twin Twisters, whatever you prefer. I kind of like Lightning Storm a little bit just because it has a bit more versatility if you know you're going second, um, but it doesn't have to be this, of course. This is just something to have a little bit extra back row removal is the focus. So that is it for the side deck. Okay, we'll go ahead and showcase a quick combo. Uh, just the quick overall explanation for people who just want this is all you really need to do is see one of these four cards and any other random card in your hand that can be utilized as a discard. Uh, so any one of these four different cards, should you open them, get you the full card combo along with a discard, or sorry, the full combo with a discard. Um, and then what you're searching throughout the combo is only just gonna be these two pieces, an extra Z Ammon or any punk level three for that matter, um, the ghost trick shot. And then the extra deck requirement is just going to be the one aloe card, the two mischief, and then the two F0. So we'll go ahead and showcase that. And I guess we'll showcase it on the worst case scenario, having the normal summon in hand and the additional card. So how this will function is you simply normal summon the Z Ammon and you will pay the 600 to add from your deck to your hand a copy of Foxy Tune. Uh, from here, you can use Foxy Tunes effect, discarding itself, and the additional card to summon the other Z Ammon from your deck. Um, obviously, this works in any different ways. Foxy Tune getting Z Ammon, Ogre Dance from Z Ammon, and then summoning the second Z Ammon after adding it with Ogre Dance, e -tally. Um, So you get the point. Is No matter how you do it, you're just getting to two level threes. If you want to play the Madam Spider instead of this and get the extra trap search, you can. It's just I like having this as the extra starter because Madam Spider doesn't facilitate the combo itself. So once you have the two level threes, it's just a simple overlay into the Ghost Trick Alucard. Then using the Ghost Trick Alucard, you just detach a, or sorry, you summon the Ghost Trick Alucard and overlay immediately into the Angel of Mischief. Angel of Mischief effect detaching to add a Ghost Trick spell or trap from your deck to your hand, which in this case is going to be the uh, Ghost Trick shot. And we'll go ahead and put the Alucard down here just to signify the graveyard. Um, you add that from your deck to your hand. Uh, from there, you can activate the shot to Monster Reborn, the Ghost Trick Alucard. It will come back. And then from there, again, the summon is not a hard once per turn, so you can overlay into a second Angel of Mischief. Um, and then from there, you just overlay both Angel of Mischief, getting rid of everything that was detached under that into the graveyard for your first F0. And then the important thing to note is on summon, uh, well, not necessarily on summon, but when this is summoned, Alucard's effect is going to trigger in grave. If it's sent to the grave, it can add a ghost trick spell uh, from your grave back to your hand. So you will take the shot and add it back. The reason this matters is because on a following turn, you can use this to reborn the Alucard, attack with it, and then go into Downard and Zeus. So you do have a Zeus follow-up on top of the F0 line. So you have the ghost trick shot in your hand, and then you overlay back into the F0. Uh, so that's all from one card uh, plus a discard and you're still ending on two cards So it's a net zero in card economy. You're not wasting anything and you end on a 
uh, undestructible monster negate every single turn that can take stuff your opponent controls with a follow-up for Zeus is really, really incredible. And whether they stop the combo or not, you're still on set four pass, which is more than enough this format. So... Uh, thank you all again so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope you all learned something. Um, and so with that said, again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for helping us hit our sub goal of 400 subs. We will announce the winner of the two boxes from Ghosts from the Past in the next video. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure your subscriptions are public so that I can see who you are. And make sure you join this card so I can reach out to you. And I will see you all in the next one. Later.